going on to the spring here. We have a spring in the mountain. Water is uh, raining in the high on the higher grounds here, and uh, then the water is running into the aquifer here, and suddenly emerging down here. And this is where we have the spring. As you can see, because of the water pressure, there may be some places where it comes out also as uh, springs, and they have a little bit different name depending on what it looks like. But that's the principle. What is falling in the higher ground and suddenly lower down it's it is emerging like this so um, you get filtrated through yeah. through the ground so it's usually quite clear and Very clean well there could be some minerals that are taken up by the from the from the ground here yeah if you're living lower then you can uh, you don't need a pump you just put the pipe there more or less and then you get it directly to your house so clean water and you can have water under pressure so you can distribute it to several houses Several villages, maybe, if there's enough water. That is a very big advantage. It's not always you have a spring. You need to live near to a mountain. After the spring, when it comes out, comes a river, and uh, it can be contaminated at that place, or just where it runs out. Therefore, you used to make some kind of construction here, uh, where, which is called a spring box. Here comes the water. And usually it was running out here, soon quickly getting uh, dirty by the by the soil here. So so you dig a hole and you build a small construction where the water is running in. So you keep it clean before it gets contaminated and get it into um, into the pipe, and so you can <coughs> lead it to the village. Pipes are, are expensive, quite expensive, and uh, you don't usually live or you don't always live very close to the, to the spring. So. Uh, um, a spring is, and with pipes and so on, uh, is something that is very often preferred by projects. If there's a project from the World Bank, Danida, which has money for investments, then they would um, often install this. Because uh, one advantage has not been mentioned yet, but it's that the, it, it doesn't need much maintenance. A pipe is not moving parts, I mean, nothing is breaking. It's best to dig pipes down. That is the standard. You dig it down to some, some depth um, because otherwise some animals may destroy it or even humans. Uh, remember in, in Tanzania where it stayed the, the people who were maintaining the, the water supply system, they were often driving out because elephants, elephants were destroying them. They could hear the water running in the pipes and they have learned that if they... Uh, do like this, then it will break and they can get some water very easily. So they often went out and uh, repaired them. That was from the elephant. Sometimes in, in the mountains it's rocky areas so you cannot really get it into the ground. It can be difficult. So, But the standard is to dig it down if possible. And then you can uh, take it into pipes and you can set up a gravity scheme like here in Nepal where you put up water posts so people can come and just open the tap. I mean, this is much easier than all the systems we have seen before. Now we just have to open a tap, uh, um, seen from the point of the uses. Uh, in this case, is in uh, South Africa, in a slum area, actually. It, uh, it's a stand post where, where this guy, he's taking money from people. So people are buying uh, their, their, their water. And uh, when he's not working, he's closing it by putting this big, drum on top and putting a, a padlock on it, and um, that's the way to control that. Here's another example of uh, hand uh, standpipes um, from Ghana, um, where the standpipe was by the road near to a school, and the school children would every day go and fill uh, this bucket so they could wash their hands and have drinking water. And they also, you can see, they put padlocks on here. So it's possible. It's not very often you see that, but it's uh, possible to close to have taps which you can close. And it, it's all to, I mean, make sure that the the system is sustainable in the sense that you need you collect some money so you can maintain the system. Good. Moving on to the deep tube well here, the installation of a uh, water to get uh, of a tube well to get uh, to the deep aquifer here. Uh, you need a big machine, a big drilling rig um, to 
to dig, and there are some different ways you can dig it. But um, you see here they're saying a bit, little prayer before uh, starting the machine, and then they started, and soil is coming up, and then they are drilling uh, by rotating this uh, uh, drilling thing for for some time. And uh, this is from northern Ghana. Um, again, you see these are the people that we saw before using the very dirty water in the in the small uh, natural pond here. Uh, they're quite interested in getting water. So uh, everybody turns up and see what's going on here. So they do a drilling for a day. In this case, uh, they didn't find water, unfortunately. And they had even, they had picked out uh, 12 spots where they thought, within a uh, county or something like that. They had picked out 12 spots that they thought were were possible, and they found only water in six of them. What is the advantage of the uh, deep tube well? You can often find a lot of water down there. It's also clean water. Again, the water has come all the way here, filtered through here, so so often you it's pretty clean, clean from a microbiological point of view at least. Depending on the system, if you're pumping too much, it, it may dry out. So, but it's often a uh, uh, as a source that is uh, abundant in, in water, so you can have it all through the dry season also. So the disadvantage, you need uh, to distribute it, you, you need a, a, an extra system, you know, you need to pump it into a water tower somehow and, and then you can distribute it. So it, in itself, it doesn't give you water under pressure, no? Drilling is quite expensive. With such a drilling rig, uh, depending on where you are in the world, but it can easily be about $10,000 for drilling. That, that is a very common price in Africa, where the drilling rigs are, are few, and uh, water is uh, difficult to find. Often $10,000 for a drilling rig for, for, for one uh, hole. And if you put a hand pump on, you remember from earlier, how many people have you served? 250 people for $10,000. It's, it's, it's not much. But quite expensive. It's not like the river. You can see there's water. Here you don't know. Like in the example I was mentioning here in, in Ghana, they didn't find water, even though they had used some geophysics uh, measurements trying to estimate it. You, you don't know because you can't see it. There is also some water sometimes, which is in between. Somehow, this is not the top water. This is not the the one way you can dig a well here, but you can make it drilling down to flat 25, 20 meters. Uh, this is the case of the West Bengal, where you, in some places, have a lot of water available. Here, three people with a small bamboo uh, arrangement here, and um, some uh, pipes, uh, some um, iron pipes here, um, can find, can establish a borehole and put a hand pump on hand pump here in, in one day and uh, the, the material is um, long a long uh, plastic flexible plastic uh, pipe here that they uh, that they bring and in the bottom they have made again from some bamboo things and a bit of uh, uh, what do you call it iron uh, mesh they just build it on the side uh, the lower few meters is where the water can get in. Then you put some uh, like mosquito net around it, so it uh, keeps the sand out, most of it, and then um, this is where it's sucking the water in. And then you put the hand pump on top. On top. This is very expensive, this is very cheap. They, they can establish such a, a hole for about $50, including the cheap hand pump. So, uh, so it's something that a lot of uh, private people also establish in, in that place. But it, this is where you're lucky, where you have water that is reasonably uh, shallow, what we call shallow uh, water here, not deep uh, water. Um, so they're lucky in that place. Imagine this is a, this is a pipe of uh, five, ten centimeters. So I'm standing here, I'm standing up here. He's the guy with the hand. So. Um, the other ones are, 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 are taking it up and down. They can they can move it with that uh, stick here. They can move it up and down. So when it's down, I put my hands on it, and then they take it up. So I'm sucking kind of the soil. Then I lift my hand. They take it out again, so the soil is coming out. Then I put my hand on again. I'm sucking it up. 
I remove my hand and they take it down while it's running out. That way you're taking gradually a little bit of soil all the way. In the end, you, you, you put more and more tubes. I mean, they have tubes of uh, three meters length or something like that. So they put one, when it comes down three meters, you put a new tube on top and then you put that down. In the end, you take the whole thing out again and it will be stable enough. And then, that, then you put the plastic pipe, the plastic tube down instead. I mean, it, it's stable enough for that time it takes to put the plastic down. And then you can put a hand pump on. Here is a private hand pump in a rich, little bit richer family. This is their toilet, nicely constructed. They have their own hand pump. But the hand pump can also be public. This is in a village. All, these are from West Bengal, uh, in a village where people are lining up. This is from Indonesia, in the outskirts of a city where people are using it for washing their feet. And this one, what is this? Uh, this is not for water. It's a gas station. But this is how it is. A lot of places in developing, right? like here, you know, you, you take it out, you press, gas is coming out. But when there's no power, there's no gas, then you start doing like this. In Tanzania, or I mean, he's, he's using a handle right there. When you don't have power, you pump gas that way here. Raised hand pump here. This is an example where, where you raise it, and it can be either because of the uh, plots, so you want to raise it so it's available when you have plots uh, in the area, or it's also a good idea if you because it's easier to lift it. it I'm not, it sounds like I'm trying to promote uh, children um, carrying water, I'm actually not. But at least when they're doing it, it's uh, possible for them to lift it to the, to the head. It's pretty tough, I mean, 20 liters. Those women here, they're stronger than me. And they, 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 they know, you know how to lift the 20 liter buckets to their heads. I, I think it's very, it's very heavy, and um, but it's possible when you have a, a raised uh, platform here. And here's another one. The India Mark II pump is very um, common also in Africa. It's a very uh, strong pump for pumping down to 100 or, or more meters.